The more I read, the worse these journal entries get. We're going to continue reading from the documented evidence by Ruby herself in her own journal of all the things she did in today's video. Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa. Sofa's back there. Roscoe's on it. He is currently awake, but he's not bathing. That's a surprise. My name's Paul. I'm sitting in front of the sofa. Don't worry, I'm not bathing, but I will be talking a lot. Now, what we're doing today is this is part two. So if you haven't heard any of this or whatever, I mean, honestly, you could just pick up here. It's all horrible. But if you're wanting to hear from the beginning of these journal entries, then go to part one of the video I did previously. Um, Full transparency is very busy at me for work. This is the most highly requested part of this evidence that came out of people wanting me to talk about it. Uh, so I'm just having to record it as I can and put it out day by day. Probably what I'll do is once it's all out, I'll put together like a marathon video and upload it um, of all of it together. And then also, to be quite honest, I can barely get through one or two pages without so much to say about this. And it's just, it, it's, it's vile. So trigger warning all over this video if, that, if, it, if this bothers you, because it possibly could. And what it is, is the things that Ruby was doing to her children. Now this in her world was just regular child rearing, I guess. But to most, literally anybody else, you're reading it with your mouth on the ground. So the way this video will work is I'm going to just read through, talk about it as we go. I'll put them on the screen here. Uh, and, and that's it. This is kind of a laid back type video. So, you know, I might try and fumble up a little bit, you know, as I read some of these words, it's her handwriting. I do apologize. Um, and that's it. Now, if you do want to follow Roscoe and I outside of here, we're on the Insta, on the gram, on the Instagram. So go on, give it a follow. It's in the description. Now, let's go ahead and jump in. I am saying page one, but it's page one for this video, right? Uh, so let's start with the first page here, picking up where we left off, which is her page 12. Okay. So it says, sending evil away in a long time possessed person is not a one and done deal, usually. These wicked spirits in ENR have been pals long before this life. How ENR got to come and get a body can only be explained in me advocating to be their mother. This is not a conceited statement. God knew I would take my responsibility to mother seriously. Jody vision something to help uh jody something to help these two souls are very weak of mind they are fools truly uh it's edited out said she would choose the devil over god what arrogant spall spew god is patient not to split her with a bolt of lightning you do not tempt a god who controls your very breath the disdain and hatred they have for god is beyond my ability to describe my spirit is offended i shudder to think i would never have seen this had i not pushed on them holding principles uh, she kind of wrote to the side there if you're watching it. Boundaries will show you how much possession a soul has. The more boundaries, the more the soul will reveal itself. Trial will not reveal a soul because of the inherent limits built into a tribulation. Back to sending evil away. Articulating truth drives evil away. This is a powerful intervention for the possessed. Even if you can start by agreeing to something truthful, edit it out, you are a daughter of God. True? Yes, ma'am. Principle six, maybe it says, following up on articulating and disdain for evil to leave with a demonstration of obedience is powerful. Demonstrating a willingness to follow truth is a pattern. Okay, let's stop before we go to the second page. Now, if you haven't caught on already, this woman is unhinged, okay? Again, we had no clue, at least I didn't, until this evidence came out, the depths that she was into all this stuff, okay? It's, I mean, literally, this is just Lori Daybell 2.0, okay? This obsession she has with her children and thinking that they are just the spawns of the devil and, you know, all this stuff, but also keep in mind, 
I've said this in the previous videos and basically about every bit of this evidence we've gone over. The stuff she is gaslighting her children about are things that her and Jody actually do, right? She's sitting here talking about, oh, they're, they they have this disdain for God and blah, 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 blah. Look at her actions. What kind of a person does these type of things to other people, especially their children, right? And then to turn around and just blame the kids for it is absolutely crazy, okay? And again, I'll say it a million times when we talk about this these kids are lucky to still be here. If it was not for the son escaping and going next door, they would not be here at this point, but for sure. There was one way that this was headed, and that was what happened you know, with Lori Daybell and those kids, right? That's just the path that this is on. Also, one thing I was thinking about since the last video that I was like, huh. And again, if you you already know, I ain't no shrink, ain't no doctor, none of that fancy stuff. So this is just sofa opinions. But I was like this. I was like, she would never want the children to become good children because then that would diminish her role. She likes being this role. She likes coming after them. She likes the punishment. If that's gone, if she said, oh yeah, the devils are gone, all this, it, it takes out her her you know pedestal that she can be on. So it was never going to happen. The same way Kevin was like, I jumped through all these hoops and it never happened. Well, of course not, honey. They didn't want you around. They just wanted your checkbook, right? She doesn't want these kids to be good. She wants them to be this because it enables her and her world to play this martyr thing she's doing and seeking attention and like thinking that she's just the next best thing since you know the king's james version or whatever okay let's go on to the next page the saver used in his interactions go sell all you have and follow me go and sin no more go wash seven times go and tell no one go tell the city go preach my gospel go feed my sheep if you can engage a weak-minded soul in a physical activity of obedience, you can begin to break the bond Satan made with the weak. Paul's right there. I would argue that she is the weak soul, right? They should give her hard labor, okay, so she can get a taste of her own damn medicine, right, and just see how quickly she folds. You know, she's talking about children, it's like these people who prey on those weaker than them. It's absolutely disgusting. Okay, let's keep going. Um, physically stop the acting out behaviors and begin physically doing good. Farm work, lifting boxes, exerting energy, exercise, jump rope, milking cows, weeding a garden, digging trenches. Satan cannot be where there is good. Begin doing sweating for good. Heavy physical intensity. Capture your attention. The problem for ENR is the hard labor is all something. So it's edited out here. Um, it's all is all for the sake of lifting. Does not have meaning or do good. We need property where a ranch can be built. Good can be done. Outcomes of prosperous choices can be seen, experienced, felt. And the kids need a good kick from a horse, a cactus to run into. They need natural outcomes. I asked R what he was thinking about since he was sitting in the shade and he had what he wanted. R answered, what I want. Now pause again. She was going to have these kids build a ranch, right? All while sitting on the sofa eating bonbons, okay? That's just the level that we're dealing with here. This whole thing, they need to get hit by a horse, they need to do that. I mean, are you serious? Right? I mean, again, I'm just like, this is next level. The absolute entitlement and God complex this woman has is off the charts, okay? And this is what I'm talking about. If they had actually gotten to the point of property and they were having these children build the ranch and do all this stuff, again, she would have eventually probably taken one of their lives through heat exhaustion, starvation, because she was like starving them out while doing this stuff. Also notice the thing where she talked about some of the punishments she's doing, carrying boxes, the cactus thing. She's re in her world where she allegedly thinks, oh, they need natural outcomes, but they're not happening, so I'll create them for them, right? I'm very curious to see what her natural outcome is in prison. Let's go on to their next page. It's their 14, R3. Uh, so she then asked him, you know, what do you want? R says, more different foods, a soft bed. Me, why don't you ask Satan? Do you think Satan will give you those things? R, no. Me, why not? R, because he doesn't have the power. Me, why would you serve a God who has no power to give you your desires? Dumb. R, silent. 
I mean, again, and she's, if you want to get into the whole argument, who's serving who, I mean, she is Satan's commander, right? Again, it's, he's a kid. He wants basic things. You know what this reminds me of? That movie Carrie. Remember the mother in that? This is literally what she's giving. When you think you're giving, you know, religious martyr, and it's really, you know, the mother from Carrie. Okay. Uh, edited out, had another episode with demons. She gives herself to them. She agreed to stop being deceptive with her facial expressions and crying and whining. Whining is the devil's voice. Whining is always a demon. Hurt facial expressions. Blame me for her misery. It is E at the center of her misery. Her face is something. I can't read that. After E did stare, she sat on the park bench looking at the mountain views. She was told to sit and be still and eat her dinner. Carrots, hummus, grilled cheese, water. E, in a power play, brought her empty plate to the door and then removed her sun hats. I'm not sure what that meant. Uh, Friday, we're going on to the next page. E woke up. I reminded her that if she whined, cried, or squinted her eyes at me or soured her face, I would be buzzing her hair. If she is going to act sick, she can look sick. I mean, come on. She agreed with a smile. I told her because she didn't listen the night before, she would do two sets of boxes stairs with a five-minute break. She did the first set easily and agreeably. After five minutes of rest, she began whimpering. When she got to the bottom stair, she slipped and, hot and dropped the box. I put her in the dog wash and shaved her head, and then back to the box, as I told E. Oh, my God. And, and this is the frustrating part, too. I mean, obviously, that's obviously frustrating. But for the child, there's never an escape from this. It doesn't matter what you do because she wants to do this to them. She's going to find reasons to do this stuff. It gives her validation. And her, meaning Ruby, and probably Jody too. It makes them feel powerful. And it's, it, it's horrifying. So... It continues on. E says, yes, ma'am, with tears. Me, it's heavier than boxes, right? E, yes, ma'am. E, me. E, I can help you find relief. You have told so many lies about me that you, something to be uh, obedient. Why do you keep being buddies with Satan? E, I don't want to work. Me, don't you see it's because you follow Satan that you keep doing boxes? If you were humble, you would be inside making pancakes with so-and-so and me. E agreed to sit on the park bench and think about her choices. I made it very clear if she were to move, get up, fidget, talk, take her hat off, she would go back to work. E agreed eagerly. She promised to be obedient. After an hour on the bench, Eve began moving and looking around. I pulled her into the house and gave her more boxes. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Can you imagine making a child, expecting a child to sit in these elements under all this duress and stress and not move? And, the, and you know that Ruby was just waiting for her to because she was excited to put her back to work. There would never be an end to this to the kids. So they would just give up eventually. And it just creates the cycle to keep going. Now to R. Me. You like sleeping on the hard ground? I slept in a soft bed. I mean, what an evil witch. Okay, R. I slept really well. Me. You are mean. Do you enjoy being mean? R. Yes, ma'am. Me. Do you expect me to feed you? R. Yes. Me. I get big over him. I will feed R. I will not feed a demon. So I will check on you in a bit. And if you want food, then be prepared to tell the truth about your behaviors. Tell the truth of who I am. Am an hour later. Me. Are you ready? No, ma'am. Me. So would you rather have no food and worship the devils? R. Yes, ma'am. I mean, again, at a certain point, you would just start rebelling. Right? I mean, you would just start rebelling. And this is what I'm talking about. She would take this until they passed away. I mean, that's, it's just, it boggles me that she felt so in, in righteous, self-righteous and entitled to this, that she did it, number one. Number two, that she wrote it down. Proud of it. Probably outlining a course to sell at Connections. Now, remember this. Remember this. This is what blows my mind, in addition to other things. While these monsters are doing this behavior right here, they are hawking courses to people and telling them how to run their families and raise their children. 
That is a level of insanity that I cannot wrap my mind around. I want to know how many people, not shock value people, but people who legitimately were like buying these courses and into it there were. The mailing list too. Go on and get that out too. I mean, this is, you know, you want to find a bunch of cases going on for CPS, you just go to that mailing list. I mean, this is my, I think this is insane, okay? Let's keep going. We're on their page 17. I've lost track of what our page is. We're just going until I'm done with this section. Good Lord. Okay, here we go. E does one set of books decently. 10 minute break. E is upset to do boxes. Gets them done. Sits in the park bench. One minute, then picks... Uh, G. Joe's Blossoms. This is Grandma Jody. Makes me sick to my stomach. Uh, picks blossoms uh, off plant. Defiant. Move boxes. She refuses. Goes to sleep on the basement floor. I don't blame her. At a certain point, I'm like, girl, give me the damn basement floor. Pick your own damn boxes up. You know what I'm saying? Um, then it says, it looks like R, stand up. Stop picking your nose. The kids both pick their noses until they bleed. Distraction. Me, you happy? R, no. Me, following Satan doesn't make you happy? Shocker. So Satan can't find you? Who is supposed to find you? R, God. Me, and? R, Christ. Me, this is a game you play. Who brings you food? R, you. You want to leave the demons? R, I don't want to humble. I told blank i wanted to give him dinner with chicken he needs to acknowledge his behaviors he tells me he is missing his opportunity to repent this is not acknowledging his behaviors i tell r he is treating me and grandma jody the way he believes he really deserves to be treated i bring him dinner of brown rice beans lentils and water i mean even when she feeds them it's just like ugh, right um i mean come on they need nutrients okay he takes the bowl and begins eating. I say, no, thank you. He said, are you going to acknowledge the woman you've been abusing just brought you dinner? I cannot believe she said that. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? He probably wanted to come up over there and just backhand this woman at this point. Who won it, right? The fact that she's going to say that. Oh, my God. All right. Well, I would say thank you, but I wouldn't really mean it. Go on. Go on, boy. Stand up to her. I mean, I feel like I'm watching this play out, y'all. Okay? Uh, with that, I reached down and grabbed his dinner and water and said, Wow, wow. R tried going back on what he said with some explanation, and I stopped him. I will not talk with a demon. Your soul is damned, and I will not hear your damnable words. Straight to bed. R was star R was starved walking stairs without a box. E was something walking stairs. I don't know if it says starved. I mean, I, I, that would, you know, make sense. Uh, without a box. She is now slipping and falling on purpose. When E was outside today, it was hot. She acted like she was dying. So pitiful. Y'all, I tell her E like... E, the heat in hell is much hotter, and God is going to burn the wicked, so either get used to it or start changing. E, I don't really believe that's actually going to happen. Amen, girl. I love, I mean, if it makes me scared for the kids, you know what I'm saying? Because I, like, we know the outcome, right? Like, we know what this woman's capable of. I mean, she's the adult. And she's an evil adult. But I love that the kids, like, throw this stuff out there, right? That they're just like, this is, like, you're a crazy woman. You can tell that they know, like, woman, you are absolutely bonkers, right? So then it goes on. The kids are all in bed. E ate mashed potatoes and turkey and milk. G. Joe, let's just continue to call her G. Joe. We've established her means Grandma Jody, but I cannot with that. I just, there's nothing grandmotherly about this woman. Um, G. Joe and Jay are looking at RV trailers. Those kids have no idea the sacrifice is being made for them. Something Jesus sacrifices already made, or Jesus' sacrifice already made. I mean, like, they're going so far out for the care of these children, right? Come on. Okay. So, there are days and nights that reveal God's most poign poignant 
miracle or mercies and miracles. Last night, God gave me a miracle I absolutely will never ever forget. I know when God gives you an errand, you do the best you can to fulfill it. He will protect you. I went to bed around 12, 10 a.m. E on the on the floor next to me to my bed. R on the patio outside my sliding glass window. Oh, okay, man. Just writing this, I am shaking, shaking. Something. If Pam hadn't uh, un volunteered to take A to American Fork for her ALT test, then I would not have been here, and my life and Jody's and my family's would forever be different. At 2:45 a.m., I was straight up out of bed. Straight up, I couldn't see R. He was gone. I, sp I opened the sliding glass door. There was no sight of him. He did leave an arrangement of rocks and letters and words. He wrote me a message, too scared. Forgot how to read. I ran to Jody's room and woke her up. She came out with me. The message said in pebbles, jail, I will call when I get there. J, I scoured the house yard. Jody got flashlights. Jody and Jay took her car, and I got blank up and went in mine. Oh, God, oh, Father, we had a miracle. We need your help now. Send to host of heaven and show us where blank is. Y'all, I mean, this is what was happening, though. It was to that point of, you're, they're sleeping outside. I mean, are you crazy? And the fact that she's thinking that this is God sending a miracle to go find him and everything, I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I mean, he probably wanted to go to jail at this point. It would be better off than where he was at. You know, in his mind, not saying he was going to go there, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and the way she lines it up. This is also a thing that you see with people like Lori and Chad and these people that, you know, that think that they are like, you know, God's gift to the world or whatever, is they associate every single thing with like God specifically came down and talked to them like, I have an errand for you. Now, it will involve victimizing lots of people, you know, but you are chosen and I'm giving this to you. And they believe this, or they say they do, right? Um... They think that they are just the cream of the crop because of this, right? Okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, so, please, please, Father, answer now. I've done everything you've asked. Protect me. Protect Jody. Protect us. Protect us. I heard in my head, go right. I went left and all the way to the roundabout by the main street to rule it out. Make sure he hadn't reached the main road and right now i'm sitting there thinking like go go run run get away from there um no, I hadn't reached the main road no sign of r i turn back to go down the dip and turn right father 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 hear me now i go right turn right again this road doesn't look familiar i speed up to cover as much road as i can racing the sun racing the devil then i see r walking on the left side of the road i call jody to let her know I turn the car around and stop. I get out of the car. R is shocked to see me. Get in the car. You shocked to see me? R nods his head and gets in. In the back, me and A or R in front. 2.45, I woke up. 3 o'clock, we leave in cars. 3.14 a.m., I call Jody with R. The sun started lightening the roads just an hour and a half later. The devil wants me in prison. Well, he got it. Thank God. My children dead. No, she was going to blame. If she had gotten to the point of taking the lives of the children, she 100% would have blamed on the devil. 100%. It would be their fault. Uh, I meet Jody back home. We deliberate in the car while L... I can't read that. J and C or... I can't read that. Uh, go back to bed. R stands in the garage where we can see him. He has zero remorse, zero fear, zero expression. He is cold, calloused, and hard. Angry he isn't calling the shots. Jody and I agreed to buy ourselves time until we until we have more of an environment conducive to an intervention we need land the spirit told jody very clearly don't let the kids choices ruin your life we have work to do you can <clears throat> you can force repentance to de to escalate the situation i brought r into the house imagine that that calmed things down. Letting the child sleep in the house. What an amazing woman this is, right? I told, or I tied a rope to my feet with him 
to my waist and his. R will now sleep in a soft bed with me. 7 a.m. R slept. The devil got a bed. Jody taught exaggeration or stagnation, something in class. Jay loaded the cooler. I put the kids in my car and took a drive. 8 a.m. A man came to look at Jody's house. 9.30, Jody and I met at the gas station. Okay, we're moving on to the next one. E and J, Jody take off to Tuscan. I drive back to the house with R. He comes in the house. He doesn't leave my sight. I feed him chicken, rice, lentils, beans, but add a glass of milk. He sits at the counter and eats. He got what he wanted. I give him the book. The Theopredis's characters. I can't see that word very well. He gets a pen in his journal. He takes notes. To the onlooker, he appears to be a well-behaved, studious young man. And wouldn't I be thrilled? My son, who wanted to run away, now by my side and reading and writing. Wouldn't I be relieved? No. I now know that in order to keep my son, I will need to put him back under sedation. Oh my god, y'all. Oh my god. This woman is sick as hell. I un something. I unhooked him from all the bells and whistles. I can't read. I don't know if that said unhooked, but something from all the bells and whistles and asked him to breathe and thrive on his own. And he went into a rest and stress back to sedation. We go y'all. The demon is still here. And I purposely put our back into a slumber hibernate. I'm very concerned about this part. Like, what does she mean? Is she giving him something? To watch R go into the awful state of compliance, knowing that the demon he harbors in his heart is so, so sick, like stitching up a patient, knowing you didn't get all the cancer out, and knowing it's only a matter of time before your patient kills over. Literally. R and E do not want to repent. They hate God per their own behaviors and words. I now see how perfectly reasonable people walk around hating God and worshiping the devil, yet appear like good old Joes, good guys. There is a soul-killing infection in my child, and my hand is forced to not remove the infection. Agency does not allow me to rid the infection. RNE like the infection. It's so sick. Oh my God, y'all. Again, a hundred thousand times I'll say this. Look at how much she's going on about how sick the children are and look at how clearly mentally unwell this woman is. Again, if, so here's the thing. Reading this now and piecing this together, if they were able to get the land to move there, that was done. The kids were done. That's where they would have lost their lives. That's where they would have lost lives. They allegedly are convinced that they are just these demons, right? And that it is up to her and Jody to write this. And you heard the one part where it said, don't let the children's choices you know, affect you or whatever. Remember Jody in the phone call talking about that? I know it's happening. This says the children are rising up and will, you know, take out the parents and all this. Okay, so that whole thing there, same way that Lori Daybell, I believe, just at a certain point, looked at the kids as in her way and that they were possessed and all the stuff they had to go. Same thing going on here. They were going to look at and were looking at these children as like a hindrance because they viewed them as nothing but evil. And so it was like they're in their world trying to save the world and write the next Bible and do all this stuff and be part of the story. And the kids were getting in their way. They were probably going to work the kids to death and starve them to death out on that property. If they had gotten it, thank God they didn't. Now, again, after reading this, hard labor for both of them. I would like to see them. What's that? There's, I think it's in Texas somewhere. That uh, that warden who makes the inmates sleep in tents outside and do, do hard labor and all that kind of stuff. And it, people are like, I don't want to go there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's this thing of like, well, then don't come to jail. That's, these two need hard labor. They need to work the demons. Out. They need a taste of their own medicine. They need to work the demons out of their own souls because the, the, they are demons. I'm sorry whether you believe in that or not. This is just pure evil. The Again, I know I say it over and over, but thank God he escaped and got to a neighbor's. You saw all this escalating. And here's the thing. No matter how Jody and uh, what's her name, Ruby paint this, you heard him say, oh, we need to hold off till we move. You know, we can't do this here. I think that they know he's escaping. He's doing this. You know, he's going to get us caught. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's really what's going on here. Because if they were this delusional, I think that they would have gotten some kind of an insanity play, right? Um, 
They knew what they were doing. They know what they were doing. A hundred percent. Um, so, so here's the deal. So that's it for this video right here. Um, again, I, 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 I can't with this, this, all of this evidence, it's so shocking to me the more I go through it to see what was really going on. Because again, like I say in my other videos, we knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was to this level, okay? Like this is extreme, okay? So yeah. Anyways, if you're still watching, I do appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Roscoe, you with it? Yep, he's still hanging out by there. He does ask that you drop some sofas off down in the comment section so that he and I can meander our way on down there to hang out and talk about this awful case and others and until we do we'll see y'all soon i just wanted to say thank you again for watching the whole video and also thank you for being part of the sofa squad special thanks to all the patreon members channel members from both of my channels everybody who likes shares subscribes comments in the comment sections it helps the channel out so much now don't forget i do have that other channel the podcast channel that's where we go live we hang out we talk uh, we have kind of sort of a schedule but just be sure and check it out i'll put it up here on the screen also if you're looking for merch be sure to check out my teespring store i'll put that up here and then like i said in the beginning of the video if you want to follow me and roscoe on the instant on the gram on instagram go on check it out it's right here on the screen again but once again thank you very much i really appreciate you being part of the sofa squad and i'll see you in the next video